Hi, John. I appreciate you having me here. My name is Boren. I am a chartered accountant by profession. And with, I have a membership with the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales. In short, it's called the ICAEW. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a relatively old organization. It's older than ACCA. You can search on Google, but I don't remember the details. But I yeah. was a accountant for quite a while. Okay. So you may be wondering, why do I pick up accountancy, right? Because yeah. back in school... Mm -hmm. That time I did an accounting subject, that was the very basic of it. Then yeah. during that time, I really find that money is very fascinating. Because I was born in a middle-income family, and I wanted to learn more about money. So that time, the easiest, not really easiest, but the more realistic way to learn about money is go to accounting. So that is where I realized I wanted to do that, and that's where I signed up for an accountancy course, and that ended up me you know, becoming a chartered accountant by profession. But mm -hmm. I, when it comes to, when you want to ask about my career, right, I was in an uh, audit field with Ernst and Yang, one of the big four accounting firms. I was yep. in audit. So um, basically, I was there because it was the very standard route, standard career path for most accountants. But you graduate from your university or college, whatever. Then, for your first career, you usually go for the firms, be audit, be tax, be advisory. Then from there, you gain your working experience because you want because you need that working experience to get a chartered accountancy title. So mm -hmm. I did that for three years, and that's where I got my chartered accountant. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's basically more about me and my profession in a nutshell. Sure, that's great. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that, Warren. You know. Today, we are looking at investment journeys of young professionals, especially working adults. So I uh, really wanted to ask you, like, tell me about your investment journey. All right. I, because I started working in 2017, that time, that is when I started to have some money, some savings. Mm. And that is where I started to get in touch with stocks. But mm. actually, even before that, I started to read all these um, business newspapers, but I never touched the stocks section. I never touched that because I think it's not relevant for me, so why do I need to read them? Yeah. Afterwards, when I started to get a job, then I realized there was this uh, platform called Rakuten Trade. It's, um, it's from my country, Malaysia. It trades Malaysian stocks, but it is a Japanese company. Long story is like that. But essentially, I saw this advertisement and they are having this platform right so i was opening so i opened an account with them and in the beginning i just simply buy but i don't know what's going on i just simply buy i just look for names that sounds that sound familiar some yeah. uh, names like nestle names like top glove corporation names like sunday berhad if you're malaysian yeah. you know. so these familiar names i was looking at them and i think that you know since they are here for a long time i think buying them could be a good idea Yep. So I bought, I didn't bought a lot at first because I don't have a lot of money. So I just simply buy, 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 buy a few, buy a few. But at that time, uh, it wasn't doing well actually. Losing a little bit, not too bad. Losing a little bit, little bit, little bit. Still can afford that. <laughs> yeah. But I would say that's a bad idea because sometimes companies have their good names, but that doesn't mean they are good companies to invest in. Mm. Right. So, but I, honestly, right, I'm more of a um, speculator slash trader rather than an investor because I tend to buy and sell really, really quick. Okay. Right? I, I tend to do that really fast. And honestly, I've been doing that for a few years, 17, 18, 19, 20, even this year. But all the past, in the past, it's been doing really badly. Um, I lost a few thousand in ringgit. So if whichever country you're from, you could convert that to your own currency. Yeah. But it was a few thousand. To put that into perspective, that would be like somebody two to three months worth of salary in total. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, it, it could sound really bad, but to, to a certain extent, it's actually not that bad because if you heard some people, they lost their savings, entire life savings to the entire market. I don't know why, but I'm not that bad. At least I lose the amount that I still can afford, right? So as you can pay my bills, as you can eat, so you can live my normal life. It's just that I have lower savings. Yeah. Right. So in the past, I've been doing really badly. 
Then, because the reason is because I, think I do it without knowledge. I just buy whatever I feel like it. Like, okay, I have a feeling that stock A is going to rise someday in the future. I just buy. Uh-huh. No research, no knowledge, yeah. just buy. Mm-hmm. So, what I'm trying to say here is that even though you're an accountant, right? It doesn't mean you will do well investing. Yeah. Because whatever you learn, but you don't really apply it on your investing journey, that doesn't work. So you need to have the knowledge. It doesn't mean your finance grad or your accounting grad means that you'll do well in the market. Because there are just so many things in the investing world that yeah. we are not taught when we are in university. And that's the truth of it. Mm-hmm. So we need to get our knowledge updated to fit the market. Okay. Yeah. So very long journey, still losing, but this year I'm losing a little bit, moving a little, moving to slightly big even, hopefully. And yeah, I'm still working on improving my journey. <laughs> right. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that, Warren. I think that's really brave, right? Because a lot of people talk about all the like hundred like beggars that you get like 100% growth and uh, people talk about all these get rich schemes through the stocks that you get but they don't talk about the losses and uh, for many young people who start investing inevitably they will lose so for you right uh, in looking back at your journey uh, what has been the biggest lesson for you? My biggest lesson is to learn how to cut my loss because Back in the past, I remember I had one trade, just one trade that I lose 1,000 ringgit. That's just one trade. That was really, really painful. But I didn't want to... I, that What happened was that I was buying at a very, very high because I was expecting it to go even higher. Yeah. But what happened is it didn't and the price dropped because of some really bad quarterly earnings if I remember correctly. But what happened was when the price dropped, I don't want to sell because I don't want to I don't want to bear the loss, right? Because normally when junior investors slash traders they start in the market, you you always say that if I don't sell it, it's not a real loss. I haven't realized it. Mm. I still can hold it and it's still not a losing one. Mm. But in reality, it's you already lost that money. But I'm still holding it on that belief itself. I was believing that it will go up again, but I didn't, and it continued to fall. There until it reaches 1,000, I said, okay, I can't do this anymore. I'm just going to bleed this one time. <sighs> All right, it's really painful. Yeah. So that was the biggest mistake I ever did, just holding it on hope. Um, in the investing or trading world, hope is a bad idea. Don't hope. If the evidence tells you that it's not going to recover soon, don't hope. Just get rid of it. But it's bad. It's easier to let it go now than hold it. It's less painful that way. Mm, that mm, was the mm. biggest mistake ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. So your this your your mistake was in holding too long, holding on to hope rather than learning to cut your losses. I mean, as you have uh, gone on to your investment journey, uh, what is your advice to young people looking to get started investing? All right, thank you. I really love this question because honestly, I have a lot of friends as well and they always ask me, can I buy Tesla? Can I buy GME? Can I buy crypto? <laughs> I would say that you really need to know what's in the market. Because yeah. there are so many things. Like stocks is a basic one, people always say. And then there's Forex. But Forex isn't really for investing, it's more like trading. Yeah. Then there are things like options, there are things like commodities. And like, hey, the most famous ones are crypto. But I really need to know what's going on with this. Because uh-huh. every single instrument, they have different elements in it. They react differently. So you really need to get to study them. Mm-hmm. See which, which one you would like to go with. Mm. But I'll suggest, not really suggest, but people always say stock is the easiest. So go with stocks first. So you go with stocks. They need to know the mechanics of stocks. Things like fundamental analysis. If you want to do investment, you need to know how to read the financial statements. You need to do analysis with the P&L, with the cash flows. That you really need to learn how to do that if you want to do investing. If you want to do trading, you need to learn the technical analysis parts, things like candlesticks, things like the trends, things like moving averages, different indicators. So 
you really need to know which instrument you want to go in and which approach. And focus on that. Learn, learn it. Don't just follow the crowd. When, because um, things that like billionaires like Warren Buffett, they always say that when people are greedy, you should be fearful. And the converse is also true. Because, you know, especially in the past few months, people are, people are talking about crypto. People are talking about Tesla. Yeah. And that is when the prices are rocket, skyrocketed to new highs. Bitcoin was around more than $60,000 per unit. It was mm. really high. But people still ask, can you buy? But I would say no, because it's really dangerous. It also really depends on your risk profile as well. So there's a lot of things, but the basic thing is to get your knowledge first. You need to know what is going on. Mm. Don't just follow advice. Okay, okay, okay. So basic thing is develop your knowledge around investing. So, I mean, there, there are a lot of myths out there about investing. I mean, what are the biggest ones for you and how have you overcome them? Hi, mm. hey John. Actually, you had mentioned one thing earlier, get rich quick. Yeah. There is a lot of people's misconception. Yeah. Personally, mine as well. Because at first, right, um, you know, people always say stock markets grow like 5 to 10% or more in a year. And some prices just move like 50% over a day or over a week. So mm. because of these occurrences, we all tend to believe that it's a get-rich-quick scheme. So actually, it's not, right? Because I, after trading a lot in the market, what I realized is that when something moves high very quickly, it will also fall very quickly. So we mm-hmm. need to see both sides of the coin, not just how easy, how easily it is to get rich. It's also we need to understand how easily it is to go bankrupt. So yeah. it's it's a it's a reality. A lot of people, you see all those courses out there when they are promoting all those crypto, all those trading, all those investments, they always show the positive results because mm-hmm. they want to sell their course to make their money. But nobody shares about how they lose money. Nobody shares how they are bankrupt. Yeah. Because that's the story that nobody wants to hear. But mm. it's a reality out there. Some people are in these sort of positions. So we need to understand that it's not just about getting rich quick. It's also about losing money quick. Mm-hmm. And that is a reality. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay. So no one shares about like, how, how they like lose money, right? They all talk about how they earn a lot of money. So, I mean, as you, as you go along your journey... Uh, in investing, uh, how how have you overcome that mindset of of like losing? Uh, so, right. so so what I mean right is that uh, a lot of young people they come in and they think like I'm I'm here to win I'm here to make money and like I don't I don't actually know like how how to quit or they might think like it's embarrassing like to like even lose any money and they are like ashamed of talking about it to their friends so uh, but for you right you, you've been very honest in, in sharing about your losses and sharing about like your uh, like your mistakes in investing so so what what helps you to like keep keep learning from this process rather than just uh, giving up because the I mean my observation is that many young people uh, they realize that wow Either like I don't know how to do investing, and even a chartered accountant loses, or they might say like, I, like uh, I I have lost, and now now it's time, like really time for me to give give my money to someone <laughs> like a financial uh advisor who can manage it for me. Mm. All right, John. Actually, this question right, is more of a psychological thing. Yeah. In the, actually, when it comes to investing and trading, right? Mm. Um, besides the technical knowledge, you need to know about how to analyze using different perspectives. You, it's mm. also important to manage emotions as well. It's one factor that allows somebody to be rich, uh, earn money consistently, or mm-hmm. it could make you bankrupt really, really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put it as an example, right? Things like fear of missing out for more. Mm. It's the one biggest thing right, that causes people to lose money. Example, Bitcoin. Happened in the past, uh, climb up to 60,000, go on the miss, continue to buy, 
And then uh, after a while, it crashed up to now it's around 30,000. So it's around losing 50% in just a short amount of time. So it's FOMO that cause, causes people to lose money because they they want to follow the crowd. They want to follow the trend. Mm. Right? But coming back to the question is, well, how do I handle losses, right? And as I said, it's a psychological thing. And uh, it doesn't just apply to the trading and investing world. It also applies to how we live our life. Like for example, let's say, you know, things like pandemic happen. Some of you may have lost a job. Some of you may not have a job. Some of you uh, might have lost something, might have ended up in a broken relationship, different things. We all have different mm. different challenges that come to our life, mm. right? So it depends on how we, how we handle these challenges. Are we accepting them like they already happened or are we denying it? Like some people are denying that at the first when the COVID happened, some people say that COVID-19 is a hoax. So are we yeah. denying it or are we accepting it? Yeah. So the most important thing is you need to realize that it's already happened and you need to accept that it already happened. Don't deny it. Hmm. Because when you start denying it, you'll find excuses for yourself. Like at the first, I also think that uh, it's just a market, you know, I'm just having a bad day, I'm just having bad luck. Hmm. So it, I don't think it's my problem. You start to blame other people. So you need to take that responsibility to yourself, accepting that it is part of your problem and start to accept that it's already happened and move on. See how you can improve in the future. But honestly, facing with losses is, it feels bad, but in reality, nobody goes with 100% win rates. People will always lose money. It just depends on how much they lose. Right, so how I come about this is that after a while, I started to develop my own trading plans. So what I did was I created an Excel sheet whereby I, if I want to plan a trade, I will plan what price do I have to enter, how much I need to buy, when I need to run if I am wrong. Let's say if I need to cut my loss. At which price point do I run? I start to sell. So I started to have this sort of plan so that I can control my losses. Mm-hmm. I may not be able to win, I, but I'm able to control how much I lose. After I reach that cut loss point, I just sell. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's, it's bleeding, but it doesn't bleed as much. Mm-hmm. After I bleed, I apply that, that bandage or whatever. Rather, I apply that bandage immediately rather than mm-hmm. continue letting it bleed. So this mm-hmm. is a concept. It's called a stop loss. Yeah. It's very important and most of us, we really need to learn that and how to use it. Mm, mm, so, mm. Uh, coming in, sh- in a short version is psychological part, accept your losses, don't deny it, mm-hmm. and afterwards, do something to control it. As for me, I do an Excel sheet to control why, how much I lose. Mm. So I don't lose that much. Mm. Wow, yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks so much for sharing that insight about learning how to lose. So uh, before we end up, was there anything else you wanted to add that I haven't asked? Hmm. All right. Actually, just a little bit brief idea, right? About yeah. what, is, what is trading and investing uh, trading and investing is about. Mm. Investing is basically you look at something very nice, you buy it and you hold it forever. Not really forever, but for a long term. It's something yeah. like, it's a relate. It's let's say put in, put in a relationship context. You see this guy slash girl that you think that you can live with him or her for the rest of your life. So you put effort into it. You study that person very well, and then you stick to that person until the end of your life. That is something like investing. When it comes to trading, it's more like you do a very short term. You see when the price is right, you enter. You see when the price is right to sell or wrong to sell, you just sell it. It's when it comes to relationship contact, it's more like a one night stand. If you want to put it that way, yeah. is that you just it's a quick one, get whatever you need to be done, move on. Mm-hmm. Right? You don't you don't hold any you don't hold any feelings to it, just get rid of it. Mm. Right? So there is a very simple explanation of what is trading and what is investing. Of course, yeah. there's a lot of details in each on every single one of it. And if you want to get started with any, you need to start to do your research, go and watch YouTube videos. And there's a lot of resources out there. Mm-hmm. Right? Just compile and learn. But of course, if you want, you can always sign up to a course as well. But 
usually stock courses are really expensive. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Boren. So just I was wondering, like, why do you trade rather than invest? All right, John, thanks for that question. I forgot to add on earlier, right? So what is so I have a few different portfolios that I allocate my money to. One is um trading. Uh, trading for my Malaysian stocks. Why I do trading for Malaysian stocks? Because I realized for Malaysia, a small country like Malaysia, is that it's very emotional and there is no stock that won't lose money in the long term. Take for example, let's say the most famous example is Top Love. Right? This stock is a, is a relatively recession-proof stock because it's in the glove industry. Mm -hmm. But what happened was that it didn't go up all the way in the past few years right last year it skyrocketed but ever since around august of 2020 it has been dropping crazily over 30 percent already so because of that reason right i don't hold investment from malaysia because it's very emotional but i do have a investment portfolio in the u.s market i just started recently not with not a lot of money, just a um, two thousand in US dollar. I did. I just start that not long ago, really. But for mm -hmm. US, I believe it can hold for long term because if you look at the stocks in the US, some stocks they can really go up for the long term. Stocks like Facebook, stocks like um, what's the name? Google. But Google mm -hmm. is expensive, so I don't buy it. Uh, Microsoft. So all these companies, right? If you look at the price performance over the past 10 years, right, it has consistently been going up. So these are the stocks that you can invest. But these sort of stocks don't happen in Malaysia, unfortunately. So it really depends on the market that you're in the stock. But so these are the two portfolios that I have that I manage personally. But of course, because I don't manage my money that well, unfortunately, as I said, I have quite a lot of losses as well. So I also have a portfolio that I allow someone else to manage. I invested an amount into stash away, right? You, you might have heard it, it's available in Malaysia and Singapore. That's why I understand. Right? So stash away, I would think that it's a good way if you it's a good way to start if you don't have any knowledge and you have quite a lot of money, but you don't know where to use it. So just let somebody else manage for you, and that's fine. Because they are regulated, so you can be assured that they are fine. Mm. But if you ask me about the performance, it's also not a very quick scheme. It's also quite slow, but it's better than fixed deposits, and it's better than you losing all your money to the market. So it's the short the short takeaway is that you need to have diversified portfolios for different things in case anything goes wrong with any one of those. You still have the others for backup. So I did that. Imagine if I put everything into my trading, which I did pretty badly, I will continue to bleed a lot. But now because I diversify into different streams, I still my losses are still manageable. I still don't lose a lot. But I only lose in the trading part, but the other two could still make money. So mm. it's very important to diversify your money as well. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for that, Warren. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. So that's that's only I would like that. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much for your time, Warren. Really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm sure others will also appreciate your insights, especially as a chartered accountant yourself. So really appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Thanks, John.